Trinitarianism. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost are three equally divine persons in one being, like a Siamese or conjoined triplet, all of which are God. Most Christians are Trinitarian. Arianism. The Son is divine yet he is distinct from and subordinate to the Father. Some Unitarians are Arian. Ebionitism, Socinianism. The Son is human, not divine, and distinct from the Father. Though not all, most Unitarians are Socinian. Sabellianism, Modalism. The same person and the same being is the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. The list of Sabellians includes Sabellius, Miguel Servito, Emmanuel Swedenborg, Thomas Campbell, Alexander Campbell, and Sidney Ritten. Sabellianism found in the Joseph Smith translation Matthew 11, 27, King James Version, KJV 27 All things are delivered unto me of my Father, and no man knoweth the Son, but the Father, neither knoweth any man the Father, save the Son, and he to whomsoever the Son will reveal him. Matthew 11, 28, New Testament Revision, Joseph Smith translation All things are delivered unto me of my Father, and no man knoweth the Son, but the Father, neither knoweth any man the Father, save the Son, and to whomsoever the Son will reveal himself. Written in Sidney Ritten's handwriting in New Testament Revision 1, and in John Whitmer's handwriting in New Testament Revision 2, Luke 10, 22, King James Version, KJV 22 All things are delivered to me of my Father, and no man knoweth who the Son is, but the Father, and who the Father is, but the Son, and he to whom the Son will reveal him. Luke 10, 23, New Testament Revision, Joseph Smith Translation, All things are delivered to me of my Father, and no man knoweth that the Son is the Father, and that the Father is the Son, but him to whom the Son will reveal it. Written in Sidney Ritten's handwriting only. New Testament Revision 2, a more direct translation of Luke 10, 22 is, All things are delivered to me by my Father, and no one knoweth who the Son is, if not the Father, and who the Father is, if not the Son, and to whom, if the Son willeth, it is revealed. Considering that one is accusative and the other nominative, the KJV in the JST translation of Matthew 11, 27 is undoubtedly correct. However, in the case of Luke 10, 22, seeing as they are both nominative, the JST is, though with difficulty, a legitimate alternative. In this complex translation, we have to accept that if the Son is not the Father, no one knoweth who the Son is, and if the Father is not the Son, no one knoweth who the Father is. The question remains did this translation come from Joseph Smith, Sidney Ritten, or the Holy Spirit? Sabellianism found in lectures on faith. One in our former lectures, we treated of the being, character, perfections, and attributes of God. What we mean by perfections is the perfections which belong to all the attributes of His nature. We shall, in this lecture, speak of the Godhead. We mean the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Two there are two personages who constitute the great, matchless, governing, and supreme power over all things, by whom all things were created and made, that are created and made, whether visible or invisible, whether in heaven, on earth, or in the earth, under the earth, or throughout the immensity of space. They are the Father and the Son, the Father being a personage of spirit, glory, and power, possessing all perfection and fullness, the Son, who was in the bosom of the Father, a personage of tabernacle, made, or fashioned like unto man or being in the form and likeness of man, or, rather, man was formed after his likeness and in his image. He is also the express image and likeness of the personage of the Father, possessing all the fullness of the Father, or, the same fullness with the Father, being begotten of him, and was ordained from before the foundation of the world to be a propitiation for the sins of all those who should believe on his name, and is called the Son because of the flesh, and descended in suffering below that which man can suffer, or, in other words, suffered greater sufferings, and was exposed to more powerful contradictions than any man can be. But notwithstanding all this, he kept the law of God, and remained without sin, showing thereby that it is in the power of man to keep the law and remain also without sin, and also, that by him a righteous judgment might come upon all flesh, and that all who walk not in the law of God, may justly be condemned by the law, and have no excuse for their sins. And he being the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth, and having overcome, received a fullness of the glory of the Father, possessing the same mind with the Father, which mind is the Holy Spirit, that bears record of the Father and the Son, and these three are one, or in other words, these three constitute the great, matchless, governing and supreme power over all things, by whom all things were created and made, that were created and made, and these three constitute the Godhead, and are one, the Father and the Son possessing the same mind, the same wisdom, glory, power and fullness, filling all in all, the Son being filled with the fullness of the mind, glory and power, or, in other words, the Spirit, glory and power of the Father, possessing all knowledge and glory, and the same kingdom, sitting at the right hand of power, in the express image and the likeness of the Father, a mediator for man, being filled with the fullness of the mind of the Father, or, in other words, the Spirit of the Father, which Spirit is shed forth upon all who believe on His name and keep His commandments, and all those who keep His commandments shall grow up from grace to grace, and become heirs of the heavenly kingdom, and joint heirs with Jesus Christ, possessing the same mind, being transformed into the same image or likeness, even the express image of Him who fills all in all, being filled with the fullness of His glory, and become one in Him, even as the Father, Son, Holy Spirit are one. Three from the foregoing account of the Godhead, which is given in His revelations, the saints have a sure foundation laid for the exercise of faith unto life and salvation, through the atonement and mediation of Jesus Christ, by whose blood they have a forgiveness of sins, and also a sure reward laid up for them in heaven, even that of partaking of the fullness of the Father and the Son, through the Spirit. As the Son partakes of the fullness of the Father through the Spirit, so the saints are, by the same Spirit, to be partakers of the same fullness, to enjoy the same glory. For as the Father and the Son are one, so in like manner the saints are to be one in them, through the love of the Father, the mediation of Jesus Christ, and the gift of the Holy Spirit, they are to be heirs of God and joint heirs with Jesus Christ. Lectures on Faith, Lecture 5. If the Father and the Son share the same mind, it is safe to say that they are the same person. Notice that instead of the word persons, the word personages is used. The lectures on faith are believed to have been written by Sidney Ritten. This coincides with teachings of the Book of Mormon, he is the Son because of the flesh and the Father, etc., but, in that the Father is a personage of spirit, contradicts a revelation given only to Joseph Smith found in the DNC, Doctrine and Covenant section 130 items of instruction given by Joseph Smith the Prophet, at Remus, Illinois, April 2nd, 1843, Doctrine and Covenant section 130, 22, 22 the Father has a body of flesh and bones as tangible as man's, the Son also, but the Holy Ghost has not a body of flesh and bones, but is a personage of spirit. Were it not so, the Holy Ghost could not dwell in us. Sabellianism found in the Book of Mormon. The Book of Mormon 1830 edition, the testimony of three witnesses, the testimony of three witnesses, and the honor to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, which is one God. Amen. Oliver Cowdery, David Whitmer, Martin Harris. Notice the word is and not are. 3 Nephi 19, 6 through 7. And the twelve did teach the multitude. And behold, they did cause that the multitude should kneel down upon the face of the earth and should pray unto the Father in the name of Jesus. Seven and the disciples did pray unto the Father also in the name of Jesus. And it came to pass that they rose and ministered
for there could have been no creation. But there is a God, and he is Christ, and he cometh in the fullness of his own time. 2 Nephi 25 12 12 But, behold, they shall have wars, and rumors of wars, and when the day cometh that the only begotten of the Father, yea, even the Father of heaven and of earth, shall manifest himself unto them in the flesh, behold, they will reject him, because of their iniquities, and the hardness of their hearts, and the stiffness of their necks. Mosiah 7 27 27 And because he said unto them that Christ was the God, the Father of all things, and said that he should take upon him the image of man, and it should be the image after which man was created in the beginning, or in other words, he said that man was created after the image of God, and that God should come down among the children of men, and take upon him flesh and blood, and go forth upon the face of the earth, Mosiah 3 8, 8 and he shall be called Jesus Christ, the Son of God, the Father of heaven and earth, the creator of all things from the beginning, and his mother shall be called Mary, Mosiah 15 1 through 5 1, and now Abinadi said unto them, I would that he should understand that God himself shall come down among the children of men, and shall redeem his people. To him because he dwelleth in flesh, he shall be called the Son of God, and having subjected the flesh to the will of the Father, being the Father and the Son, three the Father, because he was conceived by the power of God, and the Son, because of the flesh, thus becoming the Father and Son, for and they are one God, yea, the very eternal Father of heaven and of earth. Five and thus the flesh becoming subject to the Spirit, or the Son to the Father, being one God, suffereth temptation, and yieldeth not to the temptation, but suffereth himself to be mocked, and scourged, and cast out, and disowned by his people. Three Nephi one twelve through fourteen twelve, and it came to pass that he cried mightily unto the Lord all that day, and behold, the voice of the Lord came unto him, saying, Thirteen lift up your head and be of good cheer, for behold, the time is at hand, and on this night shall the sign be given, and on the morrow come I into the world, to show unto the world that I will fulfill all that which I have caused to be spoken by the mouth of my holy prophets. Fourteen behold, I come unto my own, to fulfill all things which I have made known unto the children of men from the foundation of the world, and to do the will, both of the Father and of the Son, of the Father because of me, and of the Son because of my flesh. And behold, the time is at hand, and this night shall the sign be given. Helaman 14 12 12 and also that he might know of the coming of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, the Father of heaven and of earth, the creator of all things from the beginning, and that he might know of the signs of his coming, to the intent that he might believe on his name. Helaman 16 18 18 that it is not reasonable that such a being as a Christ shall come, if so, and he be the Son of God, the Father of heaven and of earth, as it has been spoken, why will he not show himself unto us as well as unto them who shall be at Jerusalem? Mosiah 16, 15, 15 teach them that redemption cometh through Christ the Lord, who is the very eternal Father. Amen. Alma 11, 38 through 40, 38. Now Zizram saith again unto him, Is the Son of God, the very eternal Father? 39 And the Mulek said unto him, Yea, he is the very eternal Father of heaven and of earth, and all things which in them are. He is the beginning and the end, the first and the last. 40 And he shall come into the world to redeem his people, and he shall take upon him the transgressions of those who believe on his name, and these are they that shall have eternal life, and salvation cometh to none else. 3 Nephi 19, 18, 18, 18 And behold, they began to pray, and they did pray unto Jesus, calling him their Lord and their God either. 3 14 Behold, I am he who is prepared from the foundation of the world to redeem my people. Behold, I am Jesus Christ, I am the Father and the Son. In me shall all mankind have light, and that eternally, even they who shall believe on my name, and they shall become my sons and my daughters. Ether 4, 7 through 12, 7. And in that day that they shall exercise faith in me, saith the Lord, even as the brother of Jared did, that they may become sanctified in me, then will I manifest unto them the things which the brother of Jared saw, even to the unfolding unto them all my revelations, saith Jesus Christ, the Son of God, the Father of the heavens and of the earth, and all things that in them are. 8 And he that will contend against the word of the Lord, let him be accursed, and he that shall deny these things, let him be accursed, for unto them will I show no greater things, saith Jesus Christ, for I am he who speaketh. 9 And at my command the heavens are open and are shut, and at my word the earth shall shake, and at my command the inhabitants thereof shall pass away, even so as by fire. 10 And he that believeth not my words believeth not my disciples, and if so be that I do not speak, judge ye, for he shall know that it is I that speaketh, at the last day. 11 But he that believeth these things which I have spoken, him will I visit with the manifestations of my spirit, and he shall know and bear record. For because of my spirit he shall know that these things are true, for it persuadeth men to do good. 12 And whatsoever thing persuadeth men to do good is of me, for good cometh of none save it be of me. I am the same that leadeth men to all good, he that will not believe my words will not believe me that I am, and he that will not believe me will not believe the Father who sent me. For behold, I am the Father, I am the light, and the life, and the truth of the world. 1 Nephi 11 21, 1837 edition 21 And the angel said unto me, Behold the Lamb of God, yea, even the Son of the Eternal Father. Knowest thou the meaning of the tree which thy father saw? 1 Nephi 11 21, 1830 edition 21 And the angel said unto me, Behold the Lamb of God, yea, even the Eternal Father. Knowest thou the meaning of the tree which thy father saw? 1 Nephi 13 40, 1837 edition That the Lamb of God is the Son of the Eternal Father and the Savior of the world, and that all men must come unto him, or they cannot be saved. 1 Nephi 13 40, 1830 edition That the Lamb of God is the Eternal Father and the Savior of the world, and that all men must come unto him, or they cannot be saved. 1 Nephi 19 10, 10 And the God of our fathers, who were led out of Egypt, out of bondage, and also were preserved in the wilderness by him, yea, the God of Abraham, and of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, yieldeth himself, according to the words of the angel, as a man, into the hands of wicked men, to be lifted up, according to the words of Zenoch, and to be crucified, according to the words of Neum, and to be buried in a sepulchre, according to the words of Zenos, which he spake concerning the three days of darkness, which should be a sign given of his death unto those who should inhabit the isles of the sea, more especially given unto those who are of the house of Israel. Mormon 9 12, 12 Behold, he created Adam, and by Adam came the fall of man, and because of the fall of man came Jesus Christ, even the Father and the Son, and because of Jesus Christ came the redemption of man. 2 Nephi 31 21 21 And now, behold, my beloved brethren, this is the way, and there is none other way nor name given under heaven whereby man can be saved in the kingdom of God. And now, behold, this is the doctrine of Christ, and the only and true doctrine of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, which is one God, without end. Amen. Notice that this verse uses the singular is one God, compared to Mormon which uses the plural are one God. Mormon 777 7, And he hath brought to pass the redemption of the world, whereby he that is found guiltless before him at the judgment day hath it given unto him to dwell in the presence of God in his kingdom, to sing ceaseless praises with the choirs above, unto the Father, and unto the Son, and unto the Holy Ghost, which are one God, in a state of happiness which hath no end. 
Ether, five, four, and in the mouth of three witnesses shall these things be established, and the testimony of three, and this work, in which shall be shewn forth the power of God, and also his word, of which the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost beareth record, and all this shall stand as a testimony against the world, at the last day. Beareth equals third person, singular likewise, in ether they are referred to with the plural, them, ether, twelve, forty one, forty one, and now, I would commend you to seek this Jesus of whom the prophets and apostles have written, that the grace of God the Father, and also the Lord Jesus Christ, and the Holy Ghost, which beareth record of them, may be and abide in you forever. Amen. Mormon 9 12 12 Behold, he created Adam, and by Adam came the fall of man, and because of the fall of man came Jesus Christ, even the Father and the Son, and because of Jesus Christ came the redemption of man. This doctrine of Sabellianism, found in the Book of Mormon, is consistent with that found in Sydney written. However, this doctrine, and many others found in the Book of Mormon, Sabellianism, contra polygamy, contra priestcraft, contra Freemasonry, contra universalism, etc., contradict Joseph Smith's doctrine, which, like most universalists, claims that God the Father, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Ghost are one God but three separate beings. Notice that, unlike most of the revelations found in the Book of Commandments, that, in 1830, Joseph Smith receives revelations from God, the Father, and not Jesus Christ. Early in 1830, Joseph Smith tries to sell the copyright of the Book of Mormon. Joseph Smith Papers, Revelation Book 1, page 3031, handwriting on this page, John Widmer, 23 Commandment 8. D. 1830 Revelation given to Joseph Oliver Cowdery, Hiram, Hiram Page, Josiah Stowell, and Joseph Knight Sr., given at Manchester, Ontario, County, New York. Behold, I the Lord am God, I created the heavens and the earth and all things that in them is, wherefore they are mine, and I sway my scepter over all the earth, and ye are in my hands to will and to do, that I can deliver you out of every difficulty and affliction, according to your faith and diligence and uprightness before me. And I have covenanted with my servant that earth nor hell combined against him shall not take the blessing out of his hands, which I have prepared for him if he walketh uprightly before me, neither the spiritual nor the temporal blessing. And behold, I also covenanted with those who have assisted him in my work that I will do unto them even the same, because they have done that which is pleasing in my sight, yea, even all save it be one only. Wherefore be diligent in securing the copyright of my work upon all the face of the earth, of which is known by you unto my servant Joseph, and unto him whom he willeth, according as I shall command him, that the faithful and the righteous may retain the temporal blessing as well as the spiritual, and also that my work be not destroyed by the workers of iniquity to their own destruction and damnation when they are fully ripe. And now behold, I say unto you that I have covenanted, and it pleaseth me that Oliver Cowdery, Joseph Knight, High Rampage, and Josiah Stoll shall do my work in this thing, yea, even in securing the copyright, and they shall do it with an eye single to my glory, that it may be the means of bringing souls unto salvation through mine only begotten. Behold, I am God, I have spoken it, and it is expedient in me. Wherefore I say unto you that ye shall go to Kingston, seeking me continually through mine only begotten, and if ye do this, ye shall have my spirit to go with you, and ye shall have an addition of all things which is expedient in me, and I grant unto my servant a privilege that he may sell a copyright through you, speaking after the manner of men. For the four provinces, if the people harden not their hearts against the enticings of my spirit and my word, for behold, it leaf in themselves to their condemnation, and or to their salvation. Behold, my way is before you, and the means I will prepare, and the blessing I hold in mine own hand, and if ye are faithful, I will pour out upon you even as much as ye are able to bear, and thus it shall be. Behold, I am the Father, and it is through mine only begotten, which is Jesus Christ your Redeemer. Amen. In that Joseph Smith was the copyright holder, the self serving nature of this revelation, and the spontaneous request and reply of the revelation, it was likely dictated by Joseph Smith only. In this revelation of Joseph Smith, given shortly after he had supposedly authored the Book of Mormon, notice, with phrases such as, I am the Father, and it is through mine only begotten, which is Jesus Christ, the lack of Sabellianism. Letter by Hiram Page to William McClellan, Joseph heard that there was a chance to sell a copyright in Canada for any useful book that was used in the States. Joseph thought this would be a good opportunity to get a hand on a sum of money which was to be, after the expenses were taken out for the exclusive benefit of the Smith family and was to be at the disposal of Joseph. Accordingly Oliver Cowdery, Joseph Knight, Hiram Page and Joseph Stowell were chosen, as I understand by revelation, to do the business. We were living from 30 to 100 miles apart. The necessary preparation was made by them in a sly manner so as to keep Martin Harris from drawing a share of the money. It was told me we were to go by revelation, but when we had assembled at Father Smith's, there was no revelation for us to go, but we were all anxious to get a revelation to go, and when it came we were to go to Kingston where we were to sell if they would not harden their hearts, but when we got there, there was no purchaser, neither were they authorized at Kingston to buy rights for the Provence, but Little York was the place where such business had to be done. We were to get $8,000. We were treated with the best of respect by all we met with in Kingston. By the above we may learn how a revelation may be received and the person receiving it not be benefited. Letter, Hiram Page to William McClellan, Fishing River, February 2nd, 1848, Community of Christ Archives, Spelling and Punctuation Standardized by Old Watson, Other Accounts David Whitmer, An Address to All Believers in Christ, 1887, pages 30 through 31, Joseph looked into the hat in which he placed a stone, and received a revelation that some of the brethren should go to Toronto, Canada, and that they would sell the copyright of the Book of Mormon. Hiram Page and Oliver Cowdery went to Toronto on this mission, but they failed entirely to sell the copyright, returning without any money. Joseph was at my father's house when they returned. I was there also, and am an eyewitness to these facts. Jacob Whitmer and John Whitmer were also present when Hiram Page and Oliver Cowdery returned from Canada. Well, we were all in great trouble, and we asked Joseph how it was that he had received a revelation from the Lord for some brethren to go to Toronto and sell the copyright, and the brethren had utterly failed in their undertaking. Joseph did not know how it was, so he inquired of the Lord about it, and behold, the following revelation came through the stone. Some revelation are of God, some revelations are of men, and some revelations are of the devil. So we see that the revelation to go to Toronto and sell the copyright was not of God, but was of the devil or of the heart of man. Contrary to the Sabellianism found in the Book of Mormon, Joseph Smith claims that he always believed in three separate persons in a polytheistic Godhead. Prayer by Bishop Mule K. Whitney. Choir sang, Mortals Awake. President Joseph Smith read the third chapter of Revelation, and took for his text first chapter, sixth verse, and hath made us kings and priests unto God and his Father, to him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. It is altogether correct in the translation. Now, you know that of late some malicious and corrupt men have sprung up and apostatized from the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, and they declare that the prophet believes in a plurality of gods, and, lo and behold, we have discovered a very great secret. They cry, the prophet says there are many gods, and this proves that he has fallen. It has been my intention for a long time to take up this subject and lay it clearly before the people, and show what my faith is
this text for that express purpose. I wish to declare I have always and in all congregations when I have preached on the subject of the deity, it has been the plurality of gods. It has been preached by the elders for fifteen years. I have always declared I to be a distinct personage, Jesus Christ a separate and distinct personage from God the Father, and that the Holy Ghost was a distinct personage and a spirit, and these three constitute three distinct personages and three gods. If this is in accordance with the New Testament, lo and behold, we have three gods anyhow, and they are plural, and who can contradict it? Joseph Smith's sermon on plurality of gods, as printed in History of the Church, Volume 6, pages 473 through 479, sermon by the prophet, the Christian Godhead, plurality of gods, meeting in the grove, east of the temple, June 16, 1844. Unlike the Book of Mormon, Joseph Smith is not Sabellian. A visit to Joe Smith. We present the following extract from a letter received some days ago from a clergyman now in Illinois. Exchange paper. I spent the night in the city of the Latter day Saints. In the morning, I visited the lions of the place. Not Ovu contains a population variously estimated at from five to ten thousand. Probably there are six to seven thousand people there. It is a beautiful location. The city is laid out in acre lots, each lot having a house, generally of one story. It extends from three to four miles along the river, and runs back about the same distance, and this space is all built on. I called to see the prophet, and had a short but pleasant interview with him. I asked him about the gold plates which he professes to have dug up and translated into the Book of Mormon. He said, those plates are not now in this country. They were exhibited to a few at first, for the sake of obtaining their testimony. No others have ever seen them, and they will never be exhibited again. He next asked me, what is the fundamental doctrine of your faith? The unity of God, one God and one person. We don't agree with you. We believe in three gods. There are three personages in heaven, all equal in power and glory, but they are not one god. I suppose, from what I heard, that Smith makes it a point not to agree with anyone in regard to his religious opinions, and adapts himself to the person with whom he happens to be talking for the time being. Tolerable fair, though the idea that Joseph Smith adapts his conversation to the company, is an error. Joseph Smith opposes vice and error, and supports his positions from revelation, no odds whether there be two, three, or gods many. The Father and the Son are persons of tabernacle, and the Holy Ghost of Spirit, besides the sons of God, for the scriptures say, ye are gods. Times and Seasons, City of Naovu, Illinois, September 15, 1842, Volume 3, Number. 22, whole number 58, page 926. This article, title, A Visit to Joe Smith, was printed in the Commercial Advertiser and Journal, Buffalo, August 11, 1842, Joseph Smith History, 1838 A.D. 1, 1717. It no sooner appeared than I found myself delivered from the enemy which held me bound. When the light rested upon me, I saw two personages, whose brightness and glory defy all description, standing above me in the air. One of them spake unto me, calling me by name, and said, pointing to the other, This is my beloved son. Hear him. Sidney Ritten's Sabellianism continued after the death of Joseph Smith. Now behold, saith the Lord, this salvation has come to the children of Zion without labor or money on their part. But it was not so with the priesthood through which it came, it cost them both labor and money, yea, they had to sell all they had and buy the field where the treasure was hid. I, the Lord, when I was in the flesh, spake this parable referred to in relation to the kingdom as prophesied of by Daniel as also many others of my parables. My disciples who were with me understood this. Book of the Revelations of Jesus Christ to the children of Zion through Sidney Ritten, prophet and seer and revelator who was born in Washington County, Pennsylvania, February 19, 1793. Book A, Section 26. December 1866. I, the Lord, have also given each of you a female companion in the holy priesthood standing equal with you, but they are not of the same lineage of which you are, but are of the royal lineage of David, and they are sisters to Mary, she who was the mother according to the flesh of him who speaketh to you, even Jesus Christ, the Savior of the world. Book of the Revelations of Jesus Christ to the children of Zion through Sidney Ritten, prophet and seer and revelator who was born in Washington County, Pennsylvania, February 19, 1793. Book A, Section 28. June 1867. To my servant Stephen Post saith the Lord, whom as spokesman to the first great priesthood of Zion and the head thereof, as the agent of the Lord, the great God, the everlasting Father, and the Prince of Peace. Book of the Revelations of Jesus Christ to the children of Zion through Sidney Ritten, prophet and seer and revelator who was born in Washington County, Pennsylvania, February 19, 1793. Book A, Section 54. April 1869. Let it then be known in all the land and be proclaimed in the ears of all who seek salvation, that salvation cometh only through the ministration of my servant Sidney Ritten, for he alone maintained his integrity in the day when Satan overwhelmed the first church with his corruption and took it to himself, and he has failed not and fainted not until Zion is now beginning to move. Therefore saith the Lord, the mighty God, the everlasting Father, and the Prince of Peace. His existence in Zion is as necessary to her existence as the Spirit of Holiness, for Zion cannot exist except both are there. And now saith the Lord, the time has come that all the children of Zion must know and realize their dependence of him, as well as on me, your Lord, for your salvation, and therefore let all of the children of Zion be assured that I the Lord hold him in the same light and with the same sacred regard that I do Zion, for without his welfare Zion can never prosper. Book of the Revelations of Jesus Christ to the children of Zion through Sidney Ritten, prophet and seer and revelator who was born in Washington County, Pennsylvania, February 19, 1793. Book A, Section 45. October 1868. To this end, I early in the history of my work ordered a school of the prophets to be organized, but the priesthoods of that period never sought to purify their hearts before the Lord their God. But in their pride and unholy ambition sought who should be greatest, and disputations and quarrelings arose among them, and the Lord dissolved the school. I, the Lord, had through the revelator that then was promised them an endowment, but the promise was subordinate to their seeking to purify their hearts before me, but this they never did, and for want of that they were scattered, and the whole church was broken, and men left to make their own priesthoods in their own way, having entirely lost the whole object and purpose of the work of God, the gathering of Israel, and this because they made to themselves priesthoods that the Father never chose. But says the Father, notwithstanding all these foolish abominations, I have not forgot my work, I, the Lord, will say concerning all those who have turned the grace of God into lasciviousness, that there is a period in their existence when both them and their works will be brow unto judgment, judgment, and behold, saith the Lord, it shall be more tolerable for Tyre and Sidon in that day than it shall be for them. Book of the Revelations of Jesus Christ to the children of Zion through Sidney Ritten, prophet and seer and revelator who was born in Washington County, Pennsylvania, February 19, 1793. Book B, Section 84. December 5, 1873. Section 88 Answer to Conference Brother Post. The Lord sends the following things to you as a response to your letter of the 1st of Mar. It is my will, saith the Lord, the God of Zion, to let my people know the care that I have for them. As soon as they begin to shew themselves, I, the Lord, notify them that the heavens begin to prepare for their deliverance in the day of calamity, which all the prophets have seen and have prophesied concerning, and left their testimony on record. Every day and every year is pushing the hour forward. In view of that dread day, the Lord your God gives you counsel, for there are no people who call on my name who can live here when the day of wrath comes. Therefore, as a father of mercy, I, the Lord, have provided a place for you where you and yours can dwell when the wrath is
the safety provided, and escape, or to take power to yourselves and run the risk of casting my counsel and mercy behind your backs. Sidney Rigdon, Book of the Revelations of Jesus Christ to the Children of Zion through Sidney Rigdon Prophet and Seer and Revelator who was born in Washington County, Pennsylvania, February 19, 1793. Book B, Section 88. March 6, 1874. Notice that, for Sidney Rigdon, the Lord is synonymous with Jesus Christ, yet he also called him God and Everlasting Father. He likewise implies that Jesus Christ is no longer in the flesh, making Jesus Christ a sort of flesh suit that God girds about his loins. Clearly, even very late in life, Sidney Rigdon did not believe in Trinitarianism, nor Arianism, nor Sosunianism, but he continued to believe in Sabellianism. Examine carefully the scripture that Sidney Rigdon quotes, which scripture, in order to confirm that Jesus Christ is the Everlasting Father, was often quoted by Sabellians like the Campbellites and Emmanuel Swedenborg. Isaiah 9, 6 through 7, King James Version, KJV 6, for unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, LXX equals the Father of the Coming Age, the Prince of Peace, LXX for a child is born to us, and a son is given to us, whose government is upon his shoulder, and his name is called the Angel of Great Counsel, Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Potentate, Prince, Archon of Peace, Father of the Coming Age, for I will bring peace upon the Prince's Archons, and health to him, Dead Sea Scroll 4Q57, 7, seven of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end, upon the throne of David, and upon his kingdom, to order it, and to establish it with judgment with justice from henceforth even forever. The zeal of the Lord, Yahweh equals Yehu in Paleo Hebrew equals Yahweh equals Yahweh in modern Hebrew of hosts will perform this. LXX, his government shall be great, and of his peace there is no end. It shall be upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom to establish it and to support it with judgment and with righteousness from henceforth and forever. The seal of the Lord of hosts shall perform this. Dead Sea Scrolls 4Q57. With the exception of perhaps an Aleph or Yud, there are no significant differences with our oldest text. Dead Sea Scrolls 4Q57.